Well, all right, guys. We got a lot of sweet upgrades done to this rig. And I really need to get this baby out and do some testing, but it's kind of a nasty day at the moment. And my brand new dishwasher has arrived, and I got to start installing that. So, we are going to get this test in, but also, one thing I wanted to bring up, because I was sitting there, I was like, oh, wow, I got a Hobby Wing sticker that's actually the right color, you know, if I decide to use that on my window, and then I come over to the window, and I was like, well, shit. That's the only axial sticker I didn't pull off the Jeep, I think, other than the license plate. And it's not that I don't like axial or none of that on there, but it's, it just doesn't look that good, to be honest, okay? That's what I'm going to say. I'm just going to say it. It's an ugly sticker. The ones they had on here, SCX-10 and all that, you know, it kind of takes away from most of the realism, even so does Hoppy Wing, I'm sure, but that ain't my point here. Now, I thought I could peel just the axial off, but that's all part of this sticker. And I was like, well, shit, I'm going to lose my trim until I come over here and start peeling it. And I looked, and damn, if it don't look better without it. I can always paint black around there, but that's a clean look. You get a clean window instead of this stupid sticker so let me get both hands on here so i don't screw it up but look at that that's a hundred percent better than what you got and then i can if i want to put hobby wing on there i can you know so the paint seems to be right on point underneath it so far let's get this off there look how much clearer that is too i just wanted to bring that up i was taking a picture and i was like yeah that's a lot better than it was look over here all right, that let me focus, but right there, that's that's as clear as you're gonna get. Well, other than my camera, hold on. That's as clear as it gets on his face, and then you come over here and you can see him. Nice. Let's just go ahead and see if we can't get this thing peeled off there in one piece. Without leaving any of that film is the thing. Man, they did a clean paint job underneath there. I'll give them credit. Uh, Traxxas, their paint jobs are a little more sloppy. I will say that. Like TRX4s. And their, sticker, their stickers are lined out crooked as shit most of the time. <laughs> I mean, at least this was on the car straight. Uh, I'll say that. This one... Pretty, pretty dang straight, too. I'm going to give them credit. They do a good job on their stickers. Down the side, really straight. Well, all right. I'm sure some of y'all been missing the old high trail for the last few videos. I know I have. She's still my favorite. I'm a Chevy guy. I love it. Now, you know what's weird? I never realized just how much shorter the Jeep is compared to a one of these high trails uh, somebody asked me if I could do a side by side with those so that they can see the difference in size because to me the Jeeps are not that much out of scale you know even though they have the what the 313 millimeter wheelbase the dang body the tires are actually out front of the front and back so that's the wheelbase, but the body's the same as the wheelbase almost. So you look, the front tires actually stick past your front of the Jeep. Oops. Back tires are actually almost, I mean, almost dead even with it. So, that's why it looks so much shorter. Now, this truck has a longer wheelbase, plus the body is longer than the truck, so... Let me show you what happens when you go side by side. Okay. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line the back of the truck up. I'm going to make the back of the bumpers even with each other is what we're going to do. And the bumper on my high trail sticks a little bit past the Jeep, but not much. Actually, I'll just keep the back of the truck and the Jeep pretty much together. You'll see that my bumper, here, I'll back this up a little bit so it's just the body, not the bumpers. Hold on. If we can see any of this. My bumper is actually sticking way further back still. But what we're doing is just going to the this part of the body lined up. Okay? Now, 
you'll see, obviously, my tires are all the way at the back of the truck. These tires are way more forward. That puts my front tires at the door of the truck. Here's the front of the Jeep. is right here past my windshield. So, we got almost an entire fender, sorry, longer than the Jeep on this rig. So, to me, yeah, it is pretty much scale size. It might be a little wider than it should or something, but it's pretty close. It's not bad. And then, let's see. As far as this one, because that is a high trail with different shocks, but it still sits way taller. Although, the tires are the same. I'm not running a 2.2 on my rig right now on that. That's a, those are just 1.9 tires. Um, yeah, that's what we got. I think they look great side by side, don't they? Tomorrow, I'm going to go somewhere. And we're going to run this bad boy. Maybe we'll do a comparison on the high trail against the Jeep. Now that I've got some good upgrades in it, we'll see how it compares. It should stack up okay now. Shocks is the biggest downfall. I actually had somebody tell me that they, they thought Desert Lizard shocks suck. Well, it's all opinion, I guess, to what you like. But uh, I'm going to tell you now. If you think they suck, you must not be setting them up right. Because they're by far the best shock I've ever used, ever seen. I mean, let me just give you an example on this truck right here for now. Let's see. We got some stock ones on this rig. What happens if we do this? Let's see. Let me get my, lift it all the way up and just let go. Boom. How about sideways, boom? Yeah. Lift just the back and let go. Done. Up. Done. Front. Done. Done. <laughs> now, let's go over here. My front don't move all as great on here because of the drop servo, all that stuff. I don't like it, but we'll still do the front. Let's see. There's, raise it up. Let me let go. Nice and slow coming down. Up again. One, two. Two seconds of 40. Actually, two and a half. Three. Do it one more time. Let's see. One, two, three. Let's go to the rear. You got to wait for him. Come on, get down there. You ready? One, two, three. Before it even settled. Take it down some. It doesn't have a lot of up. Now, let's look at the flex. Sucker go up past the hood of this truck. Drop it. You see how slow it comes down and then the whole truck settles. Look at that. My truck is still just as level as can be. You can look at the hood and tell. Watch this. All the way up there. Boom. Level. Instantly. I have the softest springs in here, okay? You got your top spring. And then you can actually put a spring on the bottom of the shock as well. So, here's my advice. Try this. Use the, uh, the absolute softest springs in the kit. Put the big one on top, little one on the bottom, okay? That way it gets the counter uh, droop and it will pull it back down. That's how I keep the levelness, okay? Now, it comes with a bunch of different uh, rubber gasket rings uh, or plungers, whatever they are, with different holes. One hole, two hole, three hole, and four holes. It starts out, it has one in there with one hole only. Take that off, put the two hole plunger on the shock. Run the two hole plunger, softest springs in the kit, put the bottom one as well so it has that. And again, look how level that truck is right there. Level every time, I'm gonna tell you. Every time this truck is level. Look at it from the look at it from the front real quick. Boom. Level. Level. Okay. 
And again, let's go ahead and do one more of these. See how slow that comes down with it? All right. Let's try that level trick with this thing. Okay. Nice flex. Boom. See that? All my stuff about fell out of the back. She's sitting crooked right now as you speak. Level it up real nice. Do it again. Crooked. She'll come right back up. Comes up on its own. Well, I decided to make the proper driver fit in here, which I want Marty to drive it. He's a little small. Team Wolf is a little big, so we're just messing around. And now Team Wolf's fitting in there a little better now because I took the seat out messing with it. He's sitting down lower, but his legs barely, they fit now, but well, his legs always fit. You have to bend them or they're too long. He's just still a little too big for me. So what my plan is, with Marty, Marty fits it perfect. His body is the perfect size for this rig. The only issue with Marty is, is uh, he sits back too far. His seat needs adjusted forward, that's all. It sits just like so or whatever. It sits back here like this all the way. And his little short nubs cannot reach. So, right there is where he actually sits. So all we did, we're taking some screws out. We're going to drill some holes and we're going to move him forward. Just, we're going to slide the whole seat forward like so. And Marty will fit perfect. His feet will reach the pedals and his hands will reach the steering wheel. I'll show you in a minute. So, all right, that's how we're going to put him. I slid the seat forward. Now his feet can reach the pedals. His hand can reach the wheel. I haven't mounted it. That's just, normally he sits like this all the way back here like so and like you say there's like three quarters of an inch before the pedal his hand is way back there unless you straighten his arm sorry if you straighten his arm out a lot he can reach but i just took the screws out of the seat we're going to drill new ones underneath it sliding this forward a quarter inch and he will fit perfect i was going to sit him forward and put a pillow behind his back like some big wimp you know, like my wife drives <laughs> Anyway, well, Team Wolf, he has no issues sitting on that passenger side, he said. He don't mind it. He's a little big. He said it's going to be kind of odd, him and Michael J. Fox hanging out together. Alternate universe, you know, where Team Wolf went to the Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah, anyway, let me show you what we're doing here. So now, we just went ahead and drilled a couple holes forward. A little bigger, it's only a bit ahead, but it's okay. So now we're basically taking the seat, making it adjustable. Uh, we can always put it right back there if we get a bigger driver. We can put it there for the new driver. I even thought about cutting a groove. If I had my router bit instead of this drill bit, I would just connect these two dots, make it a groove, put a washer underneath the screw, and I would literally just make this an adjustable seat that can slide forward and back. Well, all right, guys, you can barely tell the seat has been moved forward. Right here is the only really spot you can tell. But now, with a few adjustments here, old Marty fits just perfect. He's meant for this rig. His hand won't reach to a shifter, but that's okay because he's always got his doobie in his hand. He's not going to be able to shift anyway. So, anyway, all I got to do is take him and use my hands, adjust the speed around, stuff like that, and he fits this truck dead on the way he should, the way a driver should. Call him small if you want to. I think he's dead on. Now, standing next to the vehicle, he might look a little smaller, but Marty is a small dude. You got to think of that. You know, Michael J. Fox is a small guy compared to Greg Brady, our team wolf. The wolf was always bigger. So, anyhow, 
let me say I got to find some velcro I'm out I need to buy some more so look at them two bad boys side by side now these are my two favorite rigs <laughs>